Hello guys, welcome to another update video on my Unity multiplayer project. Over the past month or so, I've been continuing to work on my multiplayer game, but also participated in a 48 hour game jam as well. I made a game called Flip. If you're interested, make sure to go check out that video on my channel as well. If you haven't seen my previous update videos on this multiplayer project, go watch them first. Link is below the like button. Okay, so let's get right into what I worked on this month. To start off, let's look at the valley map. As you can see, I have worked on the buildings. This is the larger house, along with a small garage beside it. The interiors are still very plain, and I don't think I'm going to add much more because I don't want the interiors to be cluttered. Maybe some tables and chairs. And all the way on the other side of the map, there's a small cabin. Now let's take a look at the new water. I think the water looks way better now that I'm using a shader graph to get the depth and refraction effects. There is also a lot of rocks that I modeled and added them around the map, especially along the river. There is now a small bridge to cross the river by the larger house, and there are some wooden docks by the cabin as well. Oh, and I also made the waterfall look a lot better I think, but I'm sure I'll tweak it more in the future. Now let me show you the colliders for this map. These are server side and invisible. Their intention is to keep players from getting to areas of the map that are not meant to be reachable. For example, in the valley map, you should not be able to go up the mountains or continue into the forest. There has to be some limit to the size of the map. So these boundaries are made by these invisible colliders that are usually supported by a visual object to make the player understand why they can't pass, like the thick grass and trees or this cliff. So I think that's about it for the improvements to the valley map. Since we have this new awesome water, I added some simple swimming when you go into the water. When the player goes into the water, you automatically float, and a simple swimming animation plays. I think this is good enough for now. If there are larger bodies of water in future maps, I may improve this system in the future. The next thing I worked on is implementing a recoil system. Let's go into the shooting range I made on my test map to have a look at this. As many other shooter games, when you shoot a weapon, the camera now raises to give the effect of recoil. This will also add to the gameplay because there will be skill involved to control the recoil in order to hit your opponent. Currently, the recoil system is fairly simple, but I will continue to improve it. I just wanted to show you this admin command I added. It's the fly command. You just type slash fly and now you can fly around the map. This is useful for development so I can get around the map quickly and see things from an aerial view. In the actual game, this will be useful for admins if they want to fly around the map for some reason or if I add some creative mode in the future. Okay, the last and more major thing I worked on is the server hosting system. Let me explain more about how my server works first. I kind of explained this in my first video, but my server is in Unity. So I have two Unity projects, one for the client and one for the server. The client project is built just like a normal Windows application and has visuals because it's what the normal player uses to play the game. But the server project is built as a server build. This way it runs in a terminal and no processing power is used on rendering. You can enable this in the build settings. There isn't too much Unity documentation on this yet unfortunately though. Okay, so now that you understand how my server works, let me show you what I have worked on with the server hosting features. I have created a system that reads a text file in the same directory as the server executable. In this file, you will be able to set the server settings like name, max players, IP, and if the server is public. So when the server runs, it loads these settings. This is the current main menu. It's just temporary and will change, I am sure. But let's go into the join. Here there is now a list of running public servers. When you run a server and you set the server to public in the server settings, the server will now be listed in this list and you can click on it if you want to join the server. You can also manually type in the IP down below if you want to join a private server. Let me explain how I manage the list of public servers. 
I'm using a database to keep track of all the running servers that are public. The database I'm using is Firebase. I have used Firebase before and I'm fairly familiar with it, so that's why I'm using it. It's free until you start getting a lot of traffic. So basically, when you start a server that is public, the server details are sent to the database. Then on the client's join screen, the list of servers is grabbed from the database and then listed for you to see and join. So that's the basic logic behind how it works. Feel free to have a look at Firebase if you're interested in this more. And this hosting system is in very early stages, so I'm sure it will change and be improved in the future. And I think that's about it for this update video. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that I now have a Discord server open for anyone to join. I know I'm a fairly small channel still, but a few people have been asking, so I thought I would make one for anybody who's interested. So feel free to come join. Link is below the like button. As always, I hope you like these update videos I am making to show off my progress, and I hope to see you in the next update video. Until then, thanks for watching.